Hello and welcome. It's Lisa from Artist Palette. Hi. We're doing the rest and reflect painting. And this is available on replay pretty much forever. So you can watch it whenever you want to. You can pause, take your time throughout this video as usual. Okay, so I, I am using reusing palettes sometimes. So um, I do have my white here, primary red or bright red, non-orange kind. You can use the orange red in this one just because it's a lot of fall colors and it's mostly orangey reds. And then bright yellow or primary yellow and black and phthalo blue or a primary blue. And I am going to, if you have a mixing palette, feel free to use that. I have a large brush here. I like to just put a lot of light blue and stuff through the sky into the water and use this brush to get some grass going. And welcome in. Then for some more details for the trees and a little bit more detail on the grass, I like to use, you can use a little bit of a frayed brush to get more texture. You can also use a thinner flat brush as well if you want to. So some sort of bright or angled brush is good. And I have a couple detailed brushes. Um, you can use a double zero, zero, or a number, and or a number two. <laughs> Hi, Mark and Vicky, welcome back. And yes, uh, anything big, this is an eight by 10, but if you have a 16 by 20, if you have something in between that or more, you know, it's okay. This is a small size. And it's actually probably easier to work with bigger sizes just because you don't have to do as much tiny details on the trees. Okay, so let's get started. Go at your own pace. I am taking my large brush and dipping that into the water. Then after you do that, just gonna dab it a little bit dry. We're going to make a nice light blue. So this light blue, it can vary. It can vary whatever you want it to be. Um, just a little bit of blue. Just a touch of water on the brush and then a scoop of white. See, it starts off nice and light. I like to just mix it as I go. One of my favorite things to do in a sky sometimes is not really having too much direction. You just, you just know that you want it to be sort of streaky, almost clouded looking, but very wispy. So for that, <clears throat> you take your light blue or even a sky blue, which is just a little bit darker. So you just add a little bit more blue if you want it slightly darker. And from here, you're going to, I like to start from the top just because it's a little bit darker here. And back and forth, nice and streaky. Maybe just take a little bit of white now and just kind of streak that. You can use the thin side of your brush. Start filling it in. I like to just blend it a little bit more, but almost not fully blended to get those wispy, cloudy streaks in the sky. Kind of cool. And you can always change your blue to make it more of like a cerulean type of blue, which is just a, like a couple dots of red. And this, it stays blue, but it's more of a muted blue. So I'm gonna use that with a little bit more white touch of water. And I can just keep going. See the different blue, slightly different. Nice and streaky. I'm going to take some white on my brush. I didn't even wash it off. It's just going to make whatever's on my brush much lighter now as I get towards the bottom. And I like it really light at the bottom where the trees are so that it's not clashing too much with blue. It tends to make a lot of muddy green colors. Okay. 
be nice and streaky. And then you can just add more blue and like a dot of red on your brush to deepen up some spots and make it lighter in the middle with some clouded wispiness. You just kind of play around with that. When you feel like you have something good going, you probably should stop. Kind of cool, you know, it's almost like an accident, but we don't tell people that. We just say, yeah, it's totally on purpose and I want it to be exactly how it is right now. Um, and then you just leave it. So I leave that. Hi, Deborah, welcome in. Love it when people from around the world join. It's awesome. We're here in Canada. So I'm going to use the same brush with the same paint on it because we're going to just paint into the water. Um, it's the same color. So you can use a light if you want to just keep it light into the water and then go darker again. So it's light here and it goes darker. You can do that or you can just do what it is here. You can just go a little bit darker overall. Kind of showcases your fall colors when you go a bit darker. So when I mean darker, I just mean basically the same blue that we had up here. Blue, maybe if you want a dot of red to give it more of a cerulean blue and a nice scoop of white until you're happy with how light it is. Touch of water. Right up to almost touching the line or you can touch the line. Uh, I leave a little gap for no particular reason just because I know that the horizon is going to be a little bit thicker than what we have here. I'm going to take white from here and just make it just going to go just below my color, pick it up. So I go up back and forth and then I start going back down. Ooh, just go over the spots a few times, back and forth, back and forth. Touch of water, take more white. And this is, you know, if you have a lot of paint still on your brush, it's going to vary in how dark it is. You shouldn't have a whole ton of paint that it's still super dark, but this will do. This is good. This is nice and light, kind of goes from dark to light. All right. Um, what I want to do from here, wash off the brush, take your time. Pause this if you need to. Wash this off. Okay, one of the things that you can add in just kind of very vaguely and sort of brief for now is some little white streaks into the water. It kind of mimics the clouds, the wispy clouds up here and some movement as well. So it can be a little bit of both. It's, it's like a, a two in one sort of step. So on my thinner flat brush, this is an angled brush. You can still just use a bright brush that's thin. Honestly, I find that both of them just do the same thing. I'm actually starting to like the, uh, the angled brush more and more just because I find it a little bit easier to use. If you are comfortable using it, I'm just going to do little flicks to so pick up a little bit of white. The more you go over it, it's just going to go back to blue. So if you if you just keep going over it, you're not going to see the white at all. So sometimes you just have to do a streak and then move on. And the shorter ones towards the back because it's further away. And then I would say some you know longer ones down here because it's closer to you. But you can do as much as you like. If you don't like some things, just Look at, I'm just gonna erase. This is called erasing because it's, it's just blended back in is all it is. It's on top of wet paint. You no longer see all of that white. So I just add some really short little streaks back here. Leave that for now. I add more later at the end. Look at that, we did a lot all in just couple steps. We did our sky. And if you want to add more clouds in your sky when it's a bit more damp or actually dry, you just take a very light blue or um, a light cer cerulean blue, which is the dot of red added to your light blue. 
much lighter than what you have here. And you, yeah, more white. You just kind of lightly streak it, I would say, using your thin medium brush just all around. Be careful with that. Don't want to, you don't want to take straight white. It'll actually just be very, very white. And I don't know if you want straight white clouds. Okay. So for our next step, uh, you can start with, I would start with grass. I would do a little layer of grass at the bottom. And then while just in case you want this to dry for longer so that you can start working on your trees on a dry background instead of working on a wet or damp blue background. It's just muddies everything up. So you can use this large brush again. You can also use a medium frayed flat or even a fan brush, whatever you, whatever you have, whatever you think works, even an angled brush too. Let's use a, a frayed brush. People tend to think it's not that good. It's kind of crappy, but it's not. It's really good for texture. So it's just wider on the end. It's been worn down. Just a little bit of water, kind of dab that dry a bit. And then when we take our green, if you have a pre-mixed green you'd rather use, go for it. It's mostly just, you can actually just mix in your blue here. Honestly, I can just do that. I can just add yellow and I have green. If you want to start fresh, take a little bit of blue. You want very little blue. I actually took too much here. I'm going to use what's on my brush. Take a big scoop of yellow. Okay, just mix it with a little bit of that. See how it's like a yellowy lime green? That's if you want that color. If you don't want that color, you want it darker, then you just add a bit more blue. It goes more on the teal side. You can add a touch of white to your liking. Okay. So I just mix that. Kind of get a little bit of the extra paint off. And starting from the bottom, or sorry, not the very, very bottom, we're going to, it depends on how much grass you want. If you, you don't want to go all the way up here, then you don't have a lot of water to show. So I'm going to do up to about here. This seems like a good spot. I'm just going to very lightly. It's not perfect, right? It's not like somebody was mowing the lawn and it's all the same in this painting. Nature is... Feature is interesting. So we're just going to have it, you're just going to flick it. See, you just, you press and you flick it upwards. You can also turn it on its side. If I use the thin side of even my angled brush and do the same thing on the thin side, you press and flick it upwards. So you start from the bottom, flip, flick it upwards. You get more actual pieces of grass. Let's go closer for this. You can use even the large brush as long, as long as you're just flicking it upwards with a flat brush. I think the flat brush does a really good job, better than any round brushes, even detailed brushes. Yeah, you can get nice detail, but it takes forever. And that's better for at the end for finer details. So I just work my way down. Just washing off the brushes. And I'm going to now take white and just like a dot of yellow. I don't mind if it's touching a little bit of green, maybe two dots of yellow. Take that and you can add in highlights. I actually did very, I'm going to do more grass because I want room for that bench. I just remembered that. So I am going to raise it up. See, highlights, layers, pretty cool. I'm going to add I'm going to add a touch more blue into this, into the same green we originally started with. You just add a touch more blue. See, it goes more tealish. Different type of green. Raise this up. We're going to come back to the grass anyways, so I'm okay with it being a little bit weird. I'm just going to raise it, raise it, raise it. Okay, and then you can sort of blend it in a little bit, get some little layers, work your way down into the grass. Go back to more of your yellowy grass. There. Okay. 
That seems like a solid amount. I would say, yeah. Okay, let's leave it there. That's our base coat of grass. And now we really get into some trees here. So when you're ready for that, we can start with our trees. First, I get a little base coat going, kind of um, just more of an island so that they're sitting on top of something. That's just a brown. You can also just use a dark green if you prefer. So if you're making brown, I'm going to take equal parts, yellow and red, just a little bit of white. Um, it actually turned brown pretty quick. I think I had some color on my brush still. That's okay. <laughs> it turned brown instantly. I, I must have touched green or blue by accident. So that would help it make it brown. If you take a little touch of blue or and or a touch of black, it actually turns brown right away. So a little bit of white. There we go. A little bit of white let's go a little bit lighter so if it's too red you just add a bit more yellow and okay mm -hmm. somebody's asking about the green in the grass you can use a premix color if you want to or it's just mostly yellow and a little bit of blue like a dot of blue to give it a yellowy lime green look um, closest color that i have to show it's actually a bright yellow green so it's pretty similar Okay. Oh, I had two plates. It's so funny. I had two plates stacked on top of each other. I'm going to use this brown to put a, so you're going to use the thin side of your brush. You don't want too much thick paint on there. Then you just get a thick line. I will just press at the horizon. There we go. It's okay if it's a little bit thicker. I'm going to cover it with trees. Okay, let's pull it up just a little. Then after I get that going, now I'm going to start with my trees. And this is where the advantage of having a bigger canvas is way better than a small one. Because if you're not really good with some, if you're not refined in your detailed work, you're going, I'm not very good at doing a small little tiny flicks. Bigger canvas is better. So I have my super small detail brush. It's like a number zero. And I'm going to use mostly the same brown and just dab leaves on top of my trees accordingly. So I use the same brown. Just a little bit of water. And you need to constantly pick up paint as you as you paint. <laughs> Pick up paint as you paint. So for example, let's start with, wow, it doesn't really matter what tree we start with. There are just so many. We're going to start over here. You just want to press very lightly. Yeah, and it's kind of, and you know, sometimes trees are just going in their own direction. They're not all up perfectly straight, as we know. You're just going to lightly Flick it over to the side. Cool. Water paint, water paint, water paint. So, but not dripping. So I have a stick there. Then I'm just getting a collection of trees. I'm just going to do another one. Slightly slanted going this way. Maybe not as tall. I'm working on this yellow one. See how I'm leaving pretty, not super generous gaps, but you know, something because when you start dabbing the leaves, they go really wide. Those are the sticks and the directions that I, I'm going to do a couple more and then I'll show you how to add some more details on it. You can even add what I call fillers. So fillers are just little sticks with no leaves. They're just kind of there in the background, dead trees, um, taking up space, but also not taking up too much space. 
Here, another one here. There we go. So if you want to add a little bit of extra detail on some of your trees, so for example, this tree here, the, like the brownish, deadish looking one, the one that's its leaves have grown to color and it started it's growing brown and like falling off a lot. With your detailed brush, you can do almost like little squigglies. You just, it's very hard to describe. It's, I call it squiggly lines. I just go back and forth very randomly to see what comes out of it. Little dots on the ends. Because it's so far away, you don't see all of the detail of the tree in the branches, but you do see some of the leaves. So these are mostly some of the branches I have going here. And you can just dab a little bit extra into the parts that you want to keep the leaves more intact. A little bit wider at the bottom, a little bit more extra down here. The knots, it's not very detailed, but also it looks more detailed because you've added squiggly lines and it looks like there's very faint branches and dead branches in the background. So there. There's some sort of brownish leaves falling sort of tree. I'll use the same brown on the very side. I'll just put in similar type, just coming in on the side that you don't really see too much of. That's the great thing about half in, half out trees. We know it's some sort of tree, but you don't need to try too hard. I just kind of blah, 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 flick, 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 done. Washing that off. I'm going to keep going with the branches, the, the sticks going across, because then I'll come back and work on my trees more sort of one by one. I'll do like the red and then I'll do some of the orange and yellow, but uh, no promises there because sometimes trees are in front of others. I'm just getting a little bit more paint. And I need to make sure that I have a little bit of water on my brush too. So same color. Even if you mix a new one, it's not the same. Perfect. It's not supposed to be exact. All right. So I'll just pretend that there's another tree really close by. It's kind of behind the orange tree. We'll, we'll leave that there. And something kind of wobbly here. We can add just like very faint little branches. Keep them very close and narrow to the tree because if you go so wide, it's a really big tree that's far away. You can go upwards on an angle for the most part. You're not gonna see too much because it's gonna have leaves on it. And then next to this yellowy green one, we have some dead trees in the background, maybe a shorter one. And then next, just really close to it, a taller one. And just giving it some not too long branches, but sometimes a little bit longer, a little bit longer on the way down. You can just add little sticks in between, little dabs. Make it look like distant branches sticking out. Okay, so these were this little collection in between. They're very faint and hard to see. I have a little technique and a little trick to help with um, 
making them not so noticeable if you're trying to do that if you're like oh that's too thick you just go back with a super light blue when it's dry and you trace around you can get rid of it you can't do it while it's wet water more brown i think this is this is like the longest part of the painting is just making these and then everything else is a lot easier because you don't have to concentrate as hard with the leaves you just dab Okay, let's just do some more trees. Sometimes I want some of them a little bit taller. Now that I can see my collection going, some of them I want taller. I don't want them all to be the same height or similar height. A little, you can go in and do those little random squiggly lines and you can just dab leaves over top and it looks like you have a bunch of branches showing through. And point some of the branches upwards. Sometimes they do that. Touch of water, more paint. Okay, so I was there. It's more of my red tree. Okay, so I have, ooh, I have this fun tree just kind of going up and going, wee, I'm over here. Uh, one of those really thin trees that just grow and kind of fall down as they're growing. You can make it a little bit thicker at the bottom too. And let's just do another small tree next to it, just kind of lightly tapped, squiggly lines in between. Sure, it's a dead tree. Okay, this is where I have the trees in the middle ground. Um, you don't you don't need to worry too much about the trees behind it because it gets really busy. So keep it simple. Just make a couple of trees. So we'll just do pretty standard stuff. Okay, just more like sticks to fill some of the space, but more further apart, less trees to worry about. And trust me, it's going to look like you have a lot of trees because you're going to put a tree right here and it's going to make it busier. You can always add more too. Okay, washing this off. Now I'm going back to the beginning, starting with some leaves. Let's use... Let's use our number two. You can also, if you have a much bigger canvas, you can use a frayed medium brush, right? You just tap with the tip of it. You go with the corner, with the tip. Since I have a smaller canvas, this is probably good. Let's start with our red, you know, let's start with our red tree. So you don't just take red and then just start painting, usually. You can sometimes. But I like to take red first, so a nice scoop of it. I don't mind if it's sort of touching a, a little small amount of green because what happens is it muddies it down just a little bit. It kind of makes it more earthy looking instead of super bright red where it's like that's too bright, too blinding. Then I add in a little small amount of yellow compared. You don't want to add a lot of white or any at all. You can add a touch, but as soon as you do, it actually starts going super salmon, like bright pinkish in a way. Okay. So we're going to wipe off a lot of this paint. And we're just going to lightly just start tapping. Tap, tap, tap. Just a little bit. I can add more branches, like the brown branches afterwards on that tree. You know what, I'm kind of, don't want it too much. I wanna use my frayed medium now. I'm just gonna do a light little tap here. 
So it's barely coated on the tip of it. Okay, barely coated on the tip of that. And then you can put that in, concentrate a little bit more in the center, a little bit up at the top. And there. Let's do another red tree, reddish looking tree. You can add some red into even some orange. So if I want, so I have a yellow in between. So let's see this big one that I add some branches on. I can just add a few dabs of red and then add orange. So it has a multi-color sort of look. So there's a little bit. Let me just tap with the tip of, let's go over here. We'll do some, some red. So what I'm doing with my brush is I'm just angling it upwards to give it different directions. Some trees have branches going up, some go down or side to side. Just make sure you go to the bottom too. And for my, even some like deeper red, you can add a touch more red into that. And it's just this tiniest, tiniest dot of black. It's like hardly anything. It gives it a deep red, like it's about to change to brown. That's when it's kind of cool looking, you know, maybe a little bit over here in like the busy area. Wash this off. So I'm still gonna add a couple more branches after I do some of my leaves because it looks like there's branches going through the leaves and coming out and you don't cover all of your branches with your leaves after you put the, anyways, let's do it after. One of the next colors, let's do, some bright yellow. Yes, I see that. White and a touch, just a little, uh, but equal parts actually. Let's just do equal parts, yellow and white. Okay. Very bright sunshine, yellow, super blinding. You can add, if it's touching a bit of green, you can have like a lime yellowy green. You can just have all the colors. You don't need to do exactly what I'm doing, but let's get this going. Oh. Actually, um, what's even better is when you add in a little touch of red and more yellow, you can get a golden color. It's like a golden yellowy color. Look at that. That's another option. More yellow is the key and a dot of red, you get a yellow golden color. It's more yellowy looking or you can make it orange it's very nice. So whatever color you've decided to use, I'm just wiping off my paint. Don't want too much paint on my brush here because it comes off very globby. Okay. Wipe it off, dry it off so it's more of a drier brush. And you can get that spongy dab at the end, more frayed. Okay, and just lightly tap, tap, tap. The more paint you have on your brush, the more it's going to cover the background. So if you want it to be thicker, you can take a little extra blob so it covers more of your, your tree. So that was my golden yellow, and it's, it looks just yellow. So, you know, maybe you should do some golden yellow for sure. Okay. So we have, um, if you want to do it, if you want to give it some more layers, you could just do like little couple little dabs, leave a gap another couple dabs, but at the top, there's less leaves. You don't need to make it so heavy at the top. It would just, it wouldn't be able to hold itself up too much. Let me just go a little bit more, leave a gap, maybe some in the middle, and then you can leave the bottom mostly. That's another way to make more of a fun tree, just overlap whatever's behind it too.
then let's see. In the background over here, um, little fillers if you want to make a sort of wannabe tree very vaguely. Just a little couple of taps at the top and these go a little bit wider at the bottom. A tree. I'm going to use this same color next to, so this is my like red orangey tree that I said I was going to do. Maybe over here, I'll just start with some yellow and put some green with it as well. I really like this kind of layered tree. Super fun. You can do it again if you really like that. I have to put some on the side. Sure, there's a bit of a tree coming in on the side. Yellow is really nice. It's a good balance. Let's do one more thing with yellow. I have next to this one, I'm going to do a lime yellowy green tree. So just start with that. You're not going to see it. You can't see it through the other trees. So the point is, is that you're not trying to make it too detailed. You just have some sort of layers of leaves. Okay, we can switch to a bit of a green. You just add in a little bit of your green. You can just mix it right into your orange. I touched a bunch of red somehow. That's okay. It makes it an earthy color. Yellow and there's just a touch of green. A little touch of white if you want it more of a bright green. Um, I know you're going, what, what color is that even? It's, it's, I haven't added much green into it. I need another dot of blue. And some more yellow. Because I mixed on top of orange. There, there's a muted light green. Okay, wiping off the paint again. So I just want to give it that spongy frayed look. You just kind of tap to give it more gap look at the tip of it there. So it's more spongy. And then we just add our color. So next to this yellow, I'm gonna dab it right in. So if you want it darker green, the key is no more white. You can start fresh with just two parts yellow, one part blue. And you can just get like a deeper, darker green. Yeah, just do that. And you can get some more of a pop of that green color. Kind of cool. It's fun. Um, you can do the same. I added some in here. Sometimes really dark can be dangerous. It's good in small doses because it really stands out. And then I had a, like a lot over here, just lightly tapped on the side, mostly with that lighter green, yellowy, more yellow and kind of a little bit more white than the blue to give it similar color as our grass down here. Okay, that's fun. Washing this off. We haven't added the layer of little shrubs and leaves at the bottom, so that's not something we've done yet. That's why it still looks pretty empty. And anything else that you want to add? I'm just trying to think. Oh yeah, orange. So yellow and just a dot of red or two dots of red, maybe three, depending on how deep orange or orange. You don't really wanna add white. You wanna keep it deeper in color. So that's your call. You have a pre-mixed orange. A nice orange is, I mean, straight up cadmium orange is good. I'm gonna use maybe a little bit of that. By the way, 
cadmium orange is easy to achieve with just yellow and red without any white at all. So I had white, but this is without white. Nice deep color. And then you can just add, ooh, yeah, that is really dark. Be careful with this one. I would save it for the tree in front here. I'm gonna go back to my very light yellowy orange. So that's more yellow and a bit of white. And then you can just dab, fill that in. We're gonna add some extra branches and then what we'll do is we'll put the layer of shrubs in the bottom down here and start making the colors bleed down. adding a little bit of orange and with some of the red, it kind of gives it more of a, um, a boost, I think. Okay, I've washed that off. Now let's just dab with our frayed brush. You can also use a round one. I should have said this earlier. You can also use something round if you want to just tap with the tip of it. It gives it a slightly different texture too. Let's start with um, a little bit of brown. Yeah. We're going to make our brown again. So brown is just orange with some black. So if you literally, if you mix all the colors together, you'll get some sort of brown, but in different ratios. So I'm taking dirty yellow and dirty red. It turns brown pretty much immediately. So if it's touching green, it goes straight to brown. I add a dot of black. Oops, I added white, did not want that. So a bit more black, red, yellow, kind of like a actual medium dark brown. Yeah, that seems fine. Wiping off lots of this paint. So I'm going to, remember, I'm just going to tap here, just go along the bottom, you can raise it up a little bit, a little bit on the bottom, just across, just a little bit, small amount. And then I take this opportunity while I have brown, I'm going to use the same brown, you can add some more white if it's too dark, mm -hmm. because when you do your branches, you're probably going to want it lighter. If you add a little bit of white, see, you can get just a, a delicate brown and it's not as harsh in the background. It looks like it's kind of faded in the background, not too detailed. That's just more white added. Okay, a little bit of water and paint. So this is where you can just add branches. You, just, you can poke your branches through your trees again. And what I mean by that is you're just adding a little bit more into it. So maybe you want to add some coming out of this red tree. Um, I didn't do a whole ton. I just filled in some of the gaps here. So maybe you want some brown branches or even just leaves. You can just lightly tap and add brown in with some of your orange leaves. And you can just go through the leaves. I wouldn't do it as much as you did when you started. Okay. Little squigglies over here just to fill some space. You can bring your brown back out into the center like that stick showing through just a little bit. And then you can just add some 
leaves and sticks and with some of like this red tree, for example. If you don't have any leaves on a tree, make it a dead tree. Just give it some branches. I think when you fill the space a little bit more, it gives it a nice forest feel. And just some going through these, like very, very little. Makes it look more complete, but not too much focus taken away from the middle ground when we were about to do that. Some of that. Maybe like a, you know, a tree stump going through the, the center. Okay. So at the end, feel free to add more leaves if you must, once you see it all together, because you don't want to keep going and feel like, oh, it's just a bunch of just colors that you, you went, you just went more and more and more. You can always add more later. So I'm going to leave it for now. I can always brighten up with a second coat of yellow or bright yellow, lime yellowy green um, afterwards, because it soaks up a lot of that color. I am now switching to my medium flat. That can be your non-frayed one. Get a little bit better control. So this is going to be the color bleeding into the water before we put our island right here. And you're just taking kind of the same colors that you took. Um, yeah, like it doesn't have to be a color match. So don't think like you have to do an exact color match. I'm just going to, I'll start with like yellow. Oh, I just touched red. Jeez, I'm just making a mess today. That's okay, I can use that orange. Orange, a little bit of white. Okay. So I'm just going to go here and just pull it down and use the thin side. So it's the same thing. You're just kind of flicking and pulling it down with a touch of water. Okay, so orange here. So we want to pull that down. It's a little bit taller tree. So I'll just do a little bit more. Um, one of the other things while you have these colors is just add a few little lumps of um, like the shrubbery at the bottom. See all this stuff down here where we put the brown? It's kind of laying over top randomly. So here's some orange, like the leaves have fallen and collected just underneath the trees. Okay, so a little bit of, I'll just put a little bit of orange where some of the red is because you can always make it more red. It's okay if it touches the brown. It's probably a good thing. We're going to clean that area up. And okay, so let's do some reds. I'm gonna add more red on my brush for the red trees. So I have a red here. I'm just going to do red is a powerful color, be careful. And that's all I need is just a little bit. A couple little streaks to accent this one. Yeah, just make it a little bit longer where the, the top of the, the tallest point of the tree is kind of just following down. Okay, so right here it's just kind of following down. There. That's a that's a good amount with the red. Wash this off. I'm going to take some yellow. Um, that would be. It can be your golden yellow. It can be yellow yellow. It can be. Um, lime yellowy green. It can be all of those colors. 
I'm just getting a little bit more of my, oh, so if you're looking for more of a nice golden yellow, cadmium yellow tends to be looking golden. Take a bit of cadmium yellow. I add a little bit of white. It's a nice soft orangey look. Okay, just a little bit lighter in between orange, more yellowy. So that's good. I am going to take more actual yellow and some white because I want more of an actual yellow yellow. We have yellow here. So we're just going to follow this, put that in, put a little bit here. Here we had a little bit more. Remember the leaves were kind of just trailing away. I just added little short little lines to reflect the parted leaves layered up so it's not just a whole long streak. And we had some more yellow here. So over here, don't really, you're not going to really see it. So I just kind of fill that in just a little bit. And then we can tap and make right on the tops here some more layered leaves collected here. Just any oranges, yellows, light oranges, reds dabbed into these little shrubbery things. And I'll add some of my yellowy green if you want to add some yellowy green. The yellow and a dot of blue and some white. Remember when we added some green in here? Okay, that's enough color. Okay, wash this off. I do a final small, just a thin line if you can. Make sure your shrubs. We're going to do a final thin line of brown at the very bottom. Unless it's already there, but I would just do it to be safe. Orange with a touch of black. So just very lightly. Just want to get more of a solid line. There. And then no more touching. See, it cleaned it right up. Let's pull it back for a second. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I am going to touch up on my grass down here. So now that it's mostly dry, or probably I think it's fully dry, you touch up on the grass, give it a little bit more detail. So that just means um, instead of it all just kind of being one color or it's supposed to be kind of flat, but you can add a bit more yellow highlights or yellowy lime green, or you can add more darkness, like more shadows. I'm just getting a little bit more yellow here. This is my frayed brush. I don't mind using it. You can use your whatever brush you, you like for your, your grass. Yellow, a little bit of dot of white, dot of blue. There's my yellowy lime. So I'm just kind of wiping off some extra paint. Lightly, just very lightly. Kind of flick it upwards. You can add little highlights. So a little bit extra uh, white. So too much paint, you won't get that frayed look. If you have a fan brush, this will do it 
probably a lot easier. And I'm just working my way down so it looks like there's layers. And now it's just a little bit more detailed and I only added like one color. That was the yellowy lime green or some extra white here and there. Just wherever, however much you want to do. And one thing I like to add is um, two parts yellow, one part blue. Just a deeper green. It's more of an actual, it's more of just a plain green. Under where the bench is going to sit. So it's just slightly off to this side. I just like to add in some deeper green and add a little bit more blue. I want it to stand out more. Okay. I'm just going to give this a little bit more of a shadow. There we go. So that's roughly where my bench is going to sit. washed off this brush. And before we start our island, I'm going to put in some little white streaks, breaking up all of this color here. That's with my thin flat brush, not a frayed one. Touch of water, just a thin coat of white. So you're just flattening, you're going to flatten your brush, you're pressing down on each side. Keep it thin and just right up to the brown, but not touching the brown. You're going to do short little lines where you can just press, go across like dotted lines in a couple layers. And it looks like it's just moving around. Nice reflection. So if it's still wet, maybe just come back to it. And sometimes you can just go a little bit further so there's more gaps as you make your way down. Because further away, it's closer together and then they space out a little bit more as you work your way down. And now you can see more of the white lines that we're putting in. So I'm going to do some longer streaks down here. do as much as you want. So this is our island. You're not going to see a whole lot over here. You can get some in now while you can. Okay. Now we can start our little island. Let's use the same brush. I start with black and then we add color from there. So let's take our black. And we can see the island is not down here. It's not all the way up here. It's kind of like in the middle between here in your grass line. So let's go right around the middle and just do a short line roughly where it's not halfway. It's just, it's super short. It just, the trees are invading out a tiny bit more. 
So from here, you're just going to do light little pieces of grass. Just going to flick it upwards. So the little heaping pile, little island, is kind of touching right where the horizon is back here. I'm just going to use the thin sides just to get a lot of grass going, fill it all in. Thanks. Hopefully we're having a good time. It's not too bad. It's not too hard. It's paying off and it's looking awesome. So you can angle them coming out more towards the left side. So they're not all just sticking straight up. Uh, so one of the things that I would recommend doing is uh, first put your tree, so this tall tree kind of sticking upwards. It's not on the very edge, it's kind of out a little bit. I'm going to press and just go up. Press up to the top. And it's reflecting into the water. So I'm going to now take that. I'm actually going to go into my grass. I'm going to press and we're going to put the grass over top later right so it doesn't look like you worked around grass it's fine you can just put grass back over top and I also pull down a little bit of this black just very light feathery not too much paint um, not really any water just really thin lines so it doesn't look like you just put a whole bunch of black in your water but it's reflecting a little bit of that silhouette And we're going to put color on top. Okay, so I wash this off. And one thing that I, I find really helpful is just taking white, start from the top, and just go next to your black and on top of it, down. Just go over it. To give it a highlight so it doesn't look totally white you can make it a little bit thicker if you want it's gray now there Let's put the tree coming out here. And there's like a little one over here. Detailed brush. Touch of water. Back to your like dark brown is good. And so we need basically orange. Touch of black. really want too much white at all actually so if it's too red add more yellow if it's too yellowy greenish add a touch more red dot of black if you think it's too orange okay so water some paint all right so this gap from here this is going to just kind of come out. We need a little bit more paint. And, and just kind of come up. I'm actually going to take a little bit more black. I want it to be more noticeable. Okay, very lightly, kind of flick it outwards. water keep taking your paint and then you can add some little branches so 
press from within, just kind of flick it outwards. But see how it's not too far out wide, it's more narrow going up, closer to this main branch. Sometimes they can go out a little bit more. So for example, they can just come out a little bit more. Especially as you go down, they can come out a little bit wider. At the top, keep them thinner, not thinner, smaller, more closer to the tree itself. And I can add branches on top. A little branch. Maybe I'll have a branch going out this way. And you'll notice that it's, see, it's really busy. It's hard to see what is what now. That's okay. Add a little branch. So you don't need to do a whole lot. And you just added a couple branches and it already looks like it's full. Maybe coming up here, fill the space. There. Then we can add another little one just next to here. Maybe just a couple little branches, and that's it. Touch more black if you want it more noticeable. Couple little twigs coming out. And that's all we need to do. So on my big tree, you can do a dark gray or just the same dark brown and add some branches coming out of here. And just add in. branch. Maybe a little bit more extended towards the top. I'll we'll have a couple more coming in the painting. Small little twigs here. There's going to be lots of leaves covering it. So it's just, it's nice to see some branches. See how I just you don't have to do it all perfectly straight. Some of them can be very squiggly. Then, let's see some on the other side and up. You don't need to force and put a whole bunch of branches on this side because you actually don't see a whole lot over here, right? You can have some branches, but overall, not much. Just like a little branch coming down, and that's about it. I didn't go all the way to the very bottom. So some overlap is okay. So while that sits and dries just for a minute before we add our either red, I like to put, you know, orange, um, a little bit of yellow. So orange on here, yellow here, red here, all the colors reflect it. This will, this was almost dry. This will dry. We put some leaves on here in the grass, a couple of reflection streaks, almost there. Let's do the bench. You can use a detailed brush and or a flat, thin one. I like to start with this one and then use my detail to just 
just get things more precise. Your bunch can be any color you want it to be. You can do like a cream color, something neutral in tone. You don't, you probably don't want to do like a bunch of red because you have red back here or orange. Yeah, so let's do a neutral tone. So one of the easier colors to do is just take a bunch of white and a dot of your brown and you have a light neutral tone. There. Bunch of white, just a dot of your brown. Okay. Um, this is how you're going to make your bench. It's easier than you think. Don't worry. You're going to have, they're actually just trapezoid shapes for pretty much everything in a very vague sense. S sort of in a way. Okay, so we're going to just start with up here. So not on top of my green, I'm going above the green. I'm gonna do a line. It's a pretty long bench. Then I'm going to go, so like a trapezoid just goes short little line in on the side about the same angle, short little line. And then you're gonna connect, okay? Fill it in. There's actually, it's like basically the width of the thin side of my brush. I just press and it pretty much fills it in very well. Cool. Now let's do the stumps. Let's go more like darker kind of gray. We just add a little bit of black. So black and white primarily make gray. So with a, you can add a dot of brown to give it a slightly brownish tone with the gray. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It can be whatever. We're going to change it up a little bit after we make these shapes. So it's, it's kind of the same. It's touching the bottom of this green. I'm, gonna go, I'm not going to go on the very end. See, in a similar shape, it goes slightly in, slightly in, and it's more. I'm just going to fill it. It's like a log, you know, tree stump. Yeah. Okay, so about the same level. I'm going to do that. Slightly in, slightly in. We have our basic shape. And then from here, you just take your detail brush and make it sharper. Water, take your dark gray with some brown. I'm just going to clean up your line. So you just go right, you just put a line right underneath. Over here, I wouldn't outline the other side. I would just streak it upwards about mostly on Let's do the right side, and then on the left side, we'll put a highlight. So along the bottom, streak it upwards. Wash it off. Then take your super light brown, so the brown with some white. Okay, let's take that. And then we're going to lightly highlight, just kind of streak through. It gives it a, a more of a textured look, looks more wooden. And you can even just take more black if you want more black streaks to get more of a pop of that contrast. There you go, very textured. I just did a bunch of streaks. It just comes together so nicely. 
Okay, so once again, uh, the bench is a dot of your brown that we just used here with a lot of white. Gives it a creamy color or whatever color you feel like doing. You can just do brown, light brown and dark brown. You can do light brown on one side, dark brown on the other. So I'm just going along the bottoms, making sure it's nice and crisp because we're going to put grass laying over top of our stumps. And I'm going to now use just black and I'm going to give it just on the bottom part, a pretty thick, I mean, it's still thin layer, just so that it looks like you can see the thickness of the bench on the side. There. And then you can clean that up with some white with your brown again. Okay, I uh, just need to plug in my computer. Hold on a second. Okay, now we can add some grass on top of the bottom of our logs. Make sure it's pretty dry. If you wanna use a detailed brush to just do individual pieces, you can. So for example, with my same detailed brush, you can take some of your dark green. If you have dark green left. <laughs> This in yellow. I mix it with a little bit of black, a couple dots of blue, mostly yellow. Nice dark green. And there, we just spreak in some grass. Also some light highlights, so just yellow and white, yellow, white. Give it some layering. And now it's more covered up. Pretty fun. All right, wash this off. So if you have your frayed brush handy, or if you wanna dab with like more of a round brush, you can grab your orange. So that can be cadmium orange, that can be light orange, any orange you like. Okay, so that's yellow with a dot of red if you want yellowy orange, like this. If you like it deeper orange, no white, just yellow and red, but two parts yellow, one part red is usually the ratio for orange. Equal parts is just basically red. So I'm starting with light orange. I'm just going to tap, tap, tap. 
little bit along the top. I don't mind taking a nice clump and just letting it be textured. It covers the branches a little bit more too. And I'm just leaving some gaps on the way down so it looks like it's just kind of sitting here nicely. You know, as it's drooping down, I'm going to follow the direction of my branches. There we go. I'll add a deeper orange on top in just a minute. Let's do some yellow and white for this middle tree that was kind of just falling over a little bit. So that color is closer to lemon yellow. That's some white, about equal parts yellow and white or two parts yellow and part white, depending, really just depending on your preference there. So I take my lemon yellow with some white. So remember when we, I was dabbing the extra paint off, remember when we dabbed, we can do some extra little bits so I can coat to really pop out the color from what you did in the background. And if you remember, you can add a tiny little dot of red if you want it to be golden yellow. Anyways, I'm just spacing it out on these branches that I've made, just more on the ends, a little bit towards the middle. Lots of gaps, so it's not just filled up everywhere. See, just very little paint and dabs of these clumps of leaves, and that's all you really need, that's it. Maybe a couple in the middle and that's it. There, yeah, okay, we'll stop. Wash this off. Red. Let's take a dot of black with red. So red, one small, little, just a little touch of black, mostly red. And we can take one little a little bit of yellow just to give it a slightly red, orangey look. And just with more of the corner and tip of our brush, I'm just adding almost like you're adding a couple leaves here and there. Just like a few little dots into the water. And what makes it kind of fun here on the end into the water, see we have some of it reflecting. So I'm just going to do very lightly with the corner of my brush. Like it's reflecting in, in there too. There we go. Let's take our deeper orange, cadmium orange, that orange with no white, two parts yellow, one part red. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. And you can enhance. Just kind of put it more, if you take this, you put it more on along the bottoms so that the tops are more highlighted. There we go. And a little bit down here. So we didn't go too far down this way. We just kind of left the leaves more along the top part of the tree. Cool. There we 
And since I have my orange, you can just touch up on any orange bleeding into dark or light orange. Generally lighter orange was the color. So with this, um, there's so many different colors. Like you could just use the same color or a light orange. You can use a little bit of white with your orange. Anyways, I'm just taking this cadmium orange, adding a little bit of white. Maybe if you wanna take a little bit more yellow with it, I'm just gonna use that. And just lightly tap along here. Okay. Light little taps like there's leaves and then a little bit into the water. You can just take some more yellow and do some of the dabs. You can do whatever colors you want reflecting into your water or from the leaves fallen. I'm just gonna cover a lot of this black because it, it's nice to see the color and not just straight up black. What I'll also do is just put in maybe a little bit of green, the yellowy lime green, dot of blue, and have that into the grass as well. Have a little dabs here. Then we can put the green grass, the same sort of green. Just to cover that. Uh, a little bit more yellow and white there, there we go. So it hides it pretty well. There, okay. Okay, almost done. We're gonna put the white, the little white technique that we did back here, here when it's a bit more dry. And I just add a couple birds, optional. And you're probably going, what, birds? Yeah, you can add birds. It's like they're so far in the distance that they're just more of like a blue, um, some sort of bluish color. I would take blue, red, equal parts, a little bit of white. So it's very similar to your sky color, except slightly darker. It's kind of neat. Here's what I mean. So I'll just put in a little bird here. Yeah, let's go closer. See how it's not too intrusive? You can add more white if it's still too dark and you don't want it too noticeable. I went a little bit darker here. Around the trees is a good spot. And they're super tiny. Let's do it so it's like trailing over this way. If you want a little bird down here. There we go. OK, 
Okay, let's just take our white flat, flat brush with a thin tip so that when we, remember when we went over the short little lines at the back. We can go over some of these ones too. Okay, so we do the same thing here, just on the lower part of the black, only in the water. You're not touching the island. And I'm just gonna do some, lots of thin little lines here. Gives it like the water is moving all around this area. I like to do little touches. I'm just lightly pressing with the tip of the brush for the most part. Just add a little extra orange. Okay, there we go. Done. You pull it back and you admire what you've done. So we love seeing your interpretations and your different styles, techniques, um, additions if you add anything or whatever you wanted to change. Hopefully this was fun. Kind of relaxing. It's painting can be, you know, different vibes for different people. Anyways, you can sign the bottom of your painting. We have lots coming up. You can see it on our website, artistpaletederm.com, on our Facebook page, Artist Palette Derm on Facebook. And there's more on our YouTube channel, so you can subscribe, too. Thanks for joining me, guys. <laughs> it's nice to see. Yeah, I'm excited to see the results. Hopefully I'll see you next time. <laughs>